One of the great things about being Catholic is that the doctrines and dogmas of the faith are the same today as they were 500 or 1,000 years ago. The great moral questions of our time have largely been examined by the church in the past and resolved, with the teachings that have emerged expanding to address seemingly new moral conundrums unique to a particular point in history. Aside from the anthropologically and historically provable fact that the church was founded by Christ on the rock of Peter, or that the early church was indeed the Catholic church, or that the early regional churches all looked to Rome for leadership, this rich history of a unified teaching that grew in a coherent manner was probably my favorite thing about the faith, or at least my favorite thing in the intellectual material side of things. That was, anyway, until the recent spat of changes in church teaching about all kinds of issues, ranging from the death penalty to the seeming recognition of adulterous relationships to, now, the latest development in this long story of unneeded changes. But first, I wanted to thank my patrons for their support of this channel. If you want to join them in supporting my work, there are links in the description below, including links to my Patreon and Subscribestar, which is now up and running again. Also, I wanted to repeat my call for submissions for my blog, ReturnToTradition.org. There have been a few articles posted by viewers and supporters like you, so please feel free to submit an article for the blog if you want using the email address in the description. I can't pay for them at this stage of things, but I do want to help get more Catholic voices out there doing this work. The main character in this story is Cardinal Marx of Germany. Many lay faithful, having confused Catholic moral dogmas and doctrines with public policy issues, have targeted Cardinal Marx with a public letter pressuring him to advocate for changes to Catholic moral teaching. We all know that Catholic moral teachings are hard, they aren't easy to live by by any stretch of the imagination. Sin is a very real thing, and as Catholic moral teaching is rooted in the natural law, changing those teachings are functionally impossible. To be sure, there are plenty of examples of prelates of the church attempting to water down those teachings, or completely misrepresenting those teachings to further the agenda of cozying up to the world. But rarely have we seen an attempt to overtly change the moral teachings of the church. Oh sure, Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church actively promotes heterodoxy and is allegedly involved in some secret revision of the catechism that will fundamentally change the church's teaching on the Bay Area lifestyle, but his heresy being promoted doesn't mean the teachings of the church will change, regardless of what kind of imprimatur he manages to get. Everyone knows what the church actually teaches on that issue. Let's have a look at the reporting on this letter Cardinal Marx received. It's actually quite hilarious in just how blatant it is. Open letter to Cardinal Marx urges changes to church teaching on sexual morality. The signatories demand the Catholic Church should hit reset on its teaching. In an open letter published Sunday by a German daily, nine German Catholics, including two prominent Jesuits, <sighs> demand a break with the church's teaching on sexual morality. The signatories call for a reworking of ecclesiastical structure, namely a separation of powers, the priestly cell ordination of women, and an end to mandatory priestly celibacy, and other changes. Published in February 3rd edition of Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, the letter is addressed to Cardinal Reinhard Marx of Munich and Friesing, president of the German Bishops' Conference and tells him that if he and other bishops were to decide to, quote, spearhead the reform movement, end quote, they would be assured of the signatory's full support. Among those who signed the letter are the rector of the Sankt Georgian Graduate School in Frankfurt, Jesuit Father Angzar Wolfening, as well as Jesuit Father Kleis Martes, and the Frankfurt City's Catholic Dean, Father Johannes Zu Eltz. Father Wolschfening's re-election as rector was recently called into question by the Vatican because of comments made in 2016 in which he claimed, among other things, that passages condemning homosexuality in the Bible had been misread. He has since been reinstated. Of course he has. The three priests are joined by former Jesuit Jörg Splett, an academic philosopher, as well as his wife, Ingrid. The Greens politician Bettina Yarask, the Frankfurt Car Car Caritas director Gabby Hagemans, and two members of the Central Committee of German Catholics, Claudia Luking Michel and Dogmer Mensink. The signatories demand the Catholic Church should hit reset and make a fresh start when it comes to the Church's teaching on sexual morality. 
including a reasonable and just evaluation of homosexuality. <laughs> the letter further calls on bishops to pursue a genuine separation of powers, claiming that this would conform better with, Christ, with Christ's morality and the open ordained ministry up to women. What is more, the signatories demand that diocesan priests should freely choose whether to live a celibate life or not. This way, celibacy can again credibly point to the kingdom of heaven, the letter states. Finally, the signatories wish Cardinal Marx a good trip to Rome when attending the February 21st to 24th Sexual Abuse Summit and to pass on their greetings to Pope Francis. Jesuits. It's always Jesuits, without fail. Where there is heterodoxy being pr promoted or outright he heresy, you'll find a Jesuit. The alt-right likes to talk about the JQ, but for Catholics, we need to address the Jesuit question. What is to be done with an order that has become so cancerous that they are a threat to the salvation of souls on a mass scale? And these Jesuits have been joined by secular far leftists who even founded a communist-sounding supposedly Catholic organization to promote their heterodoxy. And one by one and all, they are obsessed with sex. Who could have predicted that by opening the windows of the church up to the sex-obsessed world, we'd get sex-obsessed Jesuits and secular leftists, but I repeat myself, pushing for sexual libertarianism among the clergy and faithful? Who could have seen that coming? I don't know about you, but if I were a prelate of the church and I saw a letter signed by anything calling itself the Central Committee of Catholics, I'd toss it in the garbage and send a response to the writers reminding them that socialism has been utterly and unequivocally condemned by virtually every pope from the mid-19th century until Benedict XVI. I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that Greens and Jesuits are advocating openly for women's ordination, which has been repeatedly and infallibly rejected by the magisterium of the church. Nor should we be surprised at the practice of priestly celibacy, whose roots go back to the Apostles, is under attack from the fringiest elements of the German Catholic population. The German Bishops' Conference have a long, sordid history of attacking celibacy, purity, and, yes, marriage itself, so it shouldn't be surprising that the German Jesuits and laity see a kindred spirit in Cardinal Marx. After all, it was Cardinal Marx who openly favored Protestants receiving Holy Communion and says that the reception of Holy Communion by Protestants is the position of the current Pope. If the Eucharist can be liberalized, if St. Paul's warnings about reception of Holy Communion can be ignored or creatively interpreted, then of course the Jesuits and their allies see an ally in Cardinal Marx for all manner of heterodoxy. Attack the sanctity of the body and blood of Christ, truly present in the Eucharist, and an attack on the sanctity of marriage is a natural and obvious next step to take. There is something very off-putting about Jesuits and their lay allies advocating for such blatant heterodox ideas that it's noteworthy in the American Catholic press. But it's also refreshing to see that such blatant honesty from revolutionaries in the church. Just imagine, if you will, if Pastor Jimmy Martin had actually been that honest with everybody about what he wants from the church. He certainly hints at what he wants, but he never comes right out and says it. The German Jesuits are being blatantly honest with what they want and actually had the guts to write a cardinal of the church demanding it in no uncertain terms. But we know that Cardinal Marx won't openly say, hey, let's ordain women, or openly advocate for most of the ideas that he was presented with. The error those revolutionaries make is not one that he or his fellow revolutionaries in the church make. They have been very effective at promoting error and revolution in a piecemeal peace manner for 60 years. The slow revolution in the church is the one that is most likely to be successful, not the sudden catastrophic type of change that these German Jesuits are pushing for. But in the end, we know that the revolutionaries fail. As always, thank you for listening and thank you for your support. Pray and do acts of penance for the liberation and exaltation of the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Viva Cristo Rey.